Hoso, my name is Jessica Robbins, and I'm currently serving as an AmeriCorps volunteer at the College of Menominee Nation. Today, I'm going to tell you about eating bugs as part of your entomology box from this month. This is probably a bit of an unusual topic for you, and it might be gross at times, but just remember to keep an open mind. In this presentation, I'm first going to start off by talking about who eats insects, and I'm going to tell you about three areas of the world, Mexico, South Africa, Thailand, and North America. Then we're going to talk about the reasons why people eat insects, focusing on environment and nutrition. And finally, we'll talk about insect eating in the US. Just a fun fact before we get started, entomophagy is the scientific word for insect eating. That's entomophagy. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, otherwise known as the FAO, about 2 billion people around the world currently eat insects. There's about 8 billion people in the world right now, so that's one in four. Also, according to the FAO, there are 1,900 species of edible insects worldwide. This picture is showing where edible insects live. The darker colors mean more edible insects. So as you can see, there are a lot of edible insects in Central Africa, in Asia, and surprisingly, the country with the most is Mexico. I find that a little surprising because the countries surrounding Mexico, including the United States, have very low numbers of edible insects. So let's talk about one particularly interesting edible insect in Mexico. Ant larvae is a popular insect in Mexico, and in Spanish it's known as escamoles. These have been around in, in Mexico and been consumed since the age of the Aztecs. Here you see them in a taco, looking pretty delicious. Escamoles are harvested from around the roots of the agave tree during the dry season. They're sold in restaurants, but they're very expensive because harvesting them is labor intensive, so they're considered a delicacy in the cities. These caterpillars, called mopane worms, are regularly eaten in Zimbabwe, Namibia, Botswana, and South Africa. They're harvested in rural areas and are a seasonal food in those areas, but they're also considered a delicacy in cities. People harvest them by simply plucking them off of trees, then squeezing their guts out, like you see in this picture. Then they'll be left outside to dry, and after the drying process, they're kind of crunchy. They can be eaten just like that, or cooked in tomato sauce, like you see in the picture on the right. Edible insects are common street food in Thailand, and there are over 500 species of edible insects in the country. The most popular are silkworms, bamboo worms, locusts, beetles, crickets, and red ants. These insects are usually fried with soy sauce and white pepper. There is evidence that insects were consumed in North America pre-colonization. However, because of colonization, many insect eating traditions may have been lost. Most of the records we have of insect eating in North America are from Western anthropologists, and if those anthropologists showed any signs of disgust towards entomophagy, people might have been less likely to share that with the anthropologist. It's also likely that these insect eating traditions were stamped out by the colonizers and so weren't passed down through generations. Interestingly, in 1896, an anthropologist noted that the Menominee did not eat insects, according to his observations at least, and the anthropologist also called insects a loathsome food. One notable species that was eaten in North America is the grasshopper. Cultures from the Central Prairies, Great Basin, and California are reported to consume grasshoppers by roasting, boiling, or drying them. They were collected with nets or by driving them into a pit or body of water. We also have evidence from anthropologists that the Onondaga people ate ants on occasion. They regarded them as a delicacy and ate them for their citrusy flavor. Grasshoppers and ants are just two examples. Lots of insects were eaten in pre-contact America, and there's quite a few resources out there on the internet if you're interested in learning more. So now that we've talked about many different cultures around the world who eat insects, you might be wondering why. What's the point of eating insects? Well, the reason varies depending on the time and place. In some cases, people might have eaten insects because they had to because other foods were scarce. In some cases, the insects might have been very abundant, making them easy to harvest. That could be the case for grasshoppers and mopane worms. But in a lot of cases, people, people probably are eating insects because they like them and because they're nutritious. A good example is the insects that are sold as street food in Thailand. People wouldn't be buying those at markets if they weren't delicious. The same goes for the escamoles and mopane worms that are sold at fancy restaurants in cities. So taste is a big reason to eat insects, but nutrition is also important. This graphic here is from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. 
and it's comparing the nutritional value of crickets to beef and salmon. We're comparing 200 calories of each, and calories are a way of measuring the energy you get from food. So for the same amount of energy, you get 31 grams of protein from crickets, 22.4 grams of protein from beef, and 20.4 grams of protein from salmon. So crickets are definitely winning in terms of protein. Then crickets are also lower in fat and higher in omega-3s, which are also known as omega-3 fatty acids. And those are a type of healthy fat that's usually found in fish. And that explains why the salmon is actually highest in omega-3s. Then moving on to fiber, we can see that the salmon and beef have no fiber at all, while the cricket has seven grams. And of course, this is good because fiber is very good for your digestive system. So comparing these three foods, beef, salmon, and crickets, it appears that crickets are actually the most nutritious. They have a high amount of nutrients and a low amount of fat. And we'll talk more about crickets in this presentation because they're actually one of the most popular edible insects in the United States right now. So taste, nutrition, and availability explain why people across the world eat insects. But what about us? Why should we in the United States in 2020 be eating insects? There's been an increase in the last decade or so of companies that make insect products, especially crickets, as I mentioned. So why is that happening? Well, we've talked a little bit about nutrition already, and we know that crickets are very nutritious. But there's two other important factors in play here as well, and those are environment and efficiency. These two reasons go hand in hand, but I'm going to talk about efficiency first and then how that relates to the environment. Insects are very efficient to produce because they require fewer resources than other food animals like cows, sheep, pigs, and chickens. The definition of efficiency is maximum productivity with minimum wasted effort or expense. So in other words, insects give more bang for your buck than other livestock. To illustrate this, let's look at the infographic here. It's showing that crickets require less food to produce the same amount of protein. So that means if you want to make, for example, a pound of protein from crickets, you would need to use half as much feed as what you would need to get a pound of pork or chicken. The same goes for water. For every gram of beef protein that is produced, 15.8 gallons are input. That's a lot of water. In comparison, to get a gram of cricket protein, you need less than one gallon of water. Agriculture uses a lot of water, so the difference is very important for the environment. Part of the reason that it takes so much less resources to raise crickets versus other livestock is because most of the cricket is edible. 80% of a cricket is edible compared to 40% of a cow. So when you're giving a cow food and water, a lot of that is being turned into parts of the cow that aren't edible, like bones and skin. But when you give a cricket food and water, most of that turns into edible cricket. Another aspect of efficiency and environment is land use. This infographic is showing how much land it takes to raise one kilogram of beef, pork, chicken, and cricket. It takes a whopping 200 square meters of land to raise one kilogram of beef and only 15 square meters to raise one kilogram of cricket. And for context, a meter is about three feet and a kilogram is about two pounds. 70% of arable land goes to meat production. Arable land means land that is able to be used for agriculture. So 70% of agricultural land in the world is being used either for grazing or for growing crops to feed livestock. That's obviously a lot of land, and that's a problem because the world's population is increasing. And at the same time, people are wanting to eat more and more meat. So the scientists and policymakers who think about things like this are worried that in the future, we might not have enough land to feed everyone. That's where insects become important. Since it takes so much less land to produce the same volume of food, crickets could be part of the solution to feeding the world's growing population. So we've talked about the benefits of raising insects as livestock, but what does that actually look like? This is a picture of Entomo Farms, which is the largest cricket farm in North America. The crickets are inside these rows of cardboard, and that's where they'll spend the last stage of their lives. They're killed humanely by freezing and then prepared into various food items. There are several products out there that sell cricket, um, several companies out there that sell cricket products. You can find anything from energy bars to flour to whole roasted crickets. Unfortunately, these products are still pretty expensive. Since they take way fewer resources to produce, you'd think they would be cheaper. There are a few reasons for this. First is that cricket farming is still a new thing. The companies that are doing it haven't been doing it for very long, so people are still figuring out how to do it as cheaply as possible. Second, cricket farms don't receive subsidies like other farms might. 
In the U.S., the government is very involved in regulating food prices, usually through the Farm Bill, which is passed by Congress every year. But cricket farms aren't included in that. And third is that cricket products are not something that most people buy on a regular basis. They're more of a novelty item, something that you might try out once for fun, so people are willing to pay more for them. In conclusion, here are the main things to remember from this presentation. First, insects are eaten by many people around the world. It seems weird to us, but to many people it's normal. Insects are nutritious and good for the environment. Insects might help us feed the growing population because they require less resources to produce. And although insect products are rare and expensive right now, they might become less expensive in the future and could be a regular part of our diets. Thank you for listening.